welcome from Influence 2. It plays one good day to each and everyone and a happy new year too. My name is Akiba Young and I would like to welcome you to our very first AY program for this brand new year of 2021. W, we are blessed to be alive today. So, let us E, enter into his courts with prayers. L, let us all give thanks to the Lord. C, come worship him together because... Oh, our God is awesome and wonderful. And he is M, mighty and powerful. And he is E, ever loving and eternal. So now, just sit back, relax, be blessed and enjoy. Again, I say to you, welcome. Our scripture reading for today is taken from Acts chapter 9, verse 6, and it reads, So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do.
evening, everyone, and welcome to the Maracas SDA Primary Schools Revival Series entitled Disruption. For some of you, the word disruption may mean a good thing, while for others, it may mean something not so good. So this week, we are going to go through some situations that can best be described as a disruption. And we leave it up to you to determine whether what happened was good or bad. Today, before we begin, I must extend my thanks to the infant department, students, parents, and teachers, Mrs. Jardine Brisbane, principal, and the school board for supporting this initiative of the school. As we go into the word of God, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to reach out through this medium. We pray that you will give these proceedings this week and that your name will be praised. Hide me behind your cross. Let your word touch our hearts today, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. So our scripture reading today is an excerpt from a wider portion of scripture that tells the story of Saul as he is on the Damascus road. Now Saul can be described as zealous, excited, passionate. He was a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if you please, a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. He was focused on maintaining the status quo and honestly believed that what he was doing was correct as he obeyed the Jewish law without fault. So how then can we, you and I, see Saul as a bad man? How could we see someone so passionate about God being the most zealous to destroy the followers of the same Messiah? Guess what? We know now what he didn't know then, that it is not the law that saves us, but the Lord of the law. We know now that God desires relationship with him over prestigious bloodline, affiliation, and education. We know now that God desires a worshiper who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So let's talk about Saul. Saul was zealous, yeah. He wanted to do the right thing, but this was based upon his own wisdom. When we look at John chapter 16 and verse 2, we see that Saul fulfilled that prophecy because the text says, they will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. Mercy, Lord. This was Saul's situation. He was passionate to do the work of God based upon the fruit that he was exposed to. And anyone who did anything differently, like follow the teaching of the recently crucified Jesus the Christ, would have to be discouraged. In our lives, we get passionate about beliefs. We follow tradition sometimes blindly, not finding out why we believe what we believe or why we do what we do. We get passionate about the things the various groups we belong to are passionate about and sometimes forget to think for ourselves, to research for ourselves because it's easier to accept what Tong says than to ask the unpopular questions. Saul's passion was a great source of fear to the persons he had in his sights. We can sometimes become so passionate about certain things that we aren't analytical. We don't step back and ask ourselves, am I making sense pursuing this business deal, this job, this new association, this new relationship? Why are you so passionate about the things you do, about the things you believe, about the people around you? Are you finding yourself in a soul scenario? Let's look again at Saul. When he had an encounter with Christ on the Damascus road, he had to lose his physical sight to gain his spiritual sight. Somebody out there isn't hearing me today. 
Saul had to lose his physical sight to gain his spiritual sight. Now Saul was on, this, on his way to arrest and to imprison the people of the way when he lost his way. Somebody didn't hear me again, you know. You may be on your way to do something that you believe to be correct, to be God-ordained, and lose sight of what you were doing and begin to question God. You may begin to say, God, I was on this path because you told me. But here I am on a familiar path with familiar people heading to a familiar thing. But now I can't see my way. I know somebody listening, somebody looking on over this media today saying, that sounds like me. I've been working with familiar people, doing familiar things, but somehow I'm not seeing my way. Saul was on the Damascus road. God had to touch Saul. He had to take away one of his basic abilities so that he could slow down and hear the voice of the Lord. On the Damascus road, God had to blind Saul for Saul to clearly hear his voice. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but that path that you're going down, those decisions that you're making, that you're believing is God ordained, I want to ask you, who told you that? God has been closing doors, but you're there breaking down the walls to get back into situations that God is calling you out of. God is breaking you to build you, but all you are stuck in is the breaking. God is causing disruption. Somebody say disruption. Yes. It doesn't feel good because you've lost your power. You've lost your control. You've lost your authority and it's uncomfortable. Oh, but God, God provides. God provided Saul with someone to guide him physically and in time, someone to also guide him spiritually. Many of us are looking at this new year, this new season, and we're cautiously optimistic because we felt the break-in. We've lost jobs. We've lost relationships. We've lost finances. We've lost loved ones. Yes, we've lost our normal routines. Everyone has lost something. And we all want to claim that we're on our Damascus road of divine disruption. But I want you to look at what God did for Saul in his season of disruption. First thing he did, he provided men to walk with him. Then he provided men to guide him physically. He directed Saul to the one who would prepare him for what he was truly called to be. So look around you today. Who has God provided? Who has God put in your space to guide you, to walk with you? Who has God put to show you who he really is in your life? My friend, I want to remind you today that God disrupts for our good. God disrupts for our growth. God disrupts for his glory. God disrupts to awaken us. But for this awakening to take place, Saul's routine had to be disrupted. For this awareness to take place, God had to turn Saul's sight from people to God. For this awakening to take place, Saul needed a re-education. Today I'm asking you, if you felt like the last few months have been your Damascus road, what is this disruption about? If you are uncertain, but you really want to be on the correct path, this is the best time to, like Saul, as in our scripture reading, ask, Lord, what do you want me to do? God is trying to get your attention in your disruption. Are you going to push through and ignore God or are you going to seek out his instruction? Today I'm inviting you to think about every area of your life and the disruptions taking place. I'm asking you to hear the voice of the Lord saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Today is the ideal time to make a decision about the path you are on. If you've been walking with God, but you've lost your passion and don't seem to know how to get it back, just lift your hands wherever you are. If you were once walking with God, but you got distracted, and today you want to recommit, 
Just lift your hands and your hearts heavenward and make that commitment today. If you never had a relationship with God, but you know that there has been a voice calling you to explore who God is, please say this short prayer with us. Father God, we come before you broken, in need of a restorer. We have experienced your disruption, Lord, and today we are here asking you to show us what to do. We believe you have heard and already answered our prayers, Lord. Please open our eyes to see. This we pray in no other name than your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We welcome you to reach out to the numbers on the bottom of your screen for prayer, for counseling. Do have a great evening and stay blessed, my friends.